It's a live in studio event, y'all. Mm. The Hip Hop Nation, straight hip hop hits, period. You know, when we do these live in studio events, you know, sometimes, sometimes I, I, I know everything about the artist, sometimes I don't. But you know what? I spend a lot of time in Hattiesburg. Oh, put the put the whoa. put the applause up for Hattiesburg. Let's Come on! Once I, <laughs> I used to I used to spend my summers in Meridian, Mississippi. Whoa! Hold up! You know, now listen. I'm, I'm from Laplace, Louisiana. I already know. The first state that I ever left, the, the, the first time I ever left Louisiana, was to go to Mississippi. No doubt. I'm not gonna tell you what we was doing in Mississippi. It don't matter. You ain't gotta speak on it. But you <laughs> it was, was there. It was, it was some Michael Vick. Oh. It's all good. You was, but you was there though. But you we was, was there. there. Yeah. But you know what? In a long line and a long tradition of uh, great Southern artists, man, uh, and, and 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 people that uh, aren't afraid to be Southern, yet they're not afraid to be uh, revolutionary and speak their minds and show that we got a, a level of intelligence about ourselves too. No doubt. So when this young man uh, uh, first came to a Hip Hop Nation. You know, I said to myself, wow, damn, this is like the reincarnation of Pimp C and, and, and a whole lot of, because I'm from Louisiana, we, we do gumbo, I already know. you know, <laughs> I know. you know what I'm saying? And and, and, and and you just came on the on the scene as a breath of fresh air, and I'm just so happy that you're around. Big credit is here with us tonight. Hey, put, put, the, put the applause I up. I appreciate Torch. that. <laughs> I appreciate that introduction, OG. But well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This DJ Mad out right here with Big Crit. How you doing? I get to shake your Salute, 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 salute. You know, but but um, you, you know what? I also I was sitting in the um in the uh in in the, some pretty good seats at the BT Hip Hop Awards. The lights were off, and you were standing there. This is before the world got to see it. Yeah. Like, you standing there with a police outfit on. I said, Oh shit. You know, I didn't even know it was you. Exactly. Yeah, that was when. <laughs> and um, and, yeah. and, and and the way you delivered, you, you know, I, I I think it was part. It was just a poem. The way you delivered it, and, and with and with such passion, you know. And I said, damn, this is consistent with everything that's going on in your life, you know. And and, and I I want to uh, applaud you Thank for you. being so courageous as to as, as to do that at the BET Hip Hop Awards. I appreciate it. Um, that poem. What inspired that? It's, it's obvious what inspired that, but what inspired those particular words to come from your soul? Well, um, it, it comes from a record that I actually did with Kenneth Whalem called Might Not Be Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I dropped 12 for 12, and the same day Mr. Sterling got killed and everybody saw the footage. Mm -hmm. and for me as an artist, it, it put me in a position where I was, I was like, man, am I really changing anything with the music? Am I helping people? And Kenneth Whalem is an amazing musician, amazing artist. I called mm -hmm. him and was like, man, I want to do a song but I really don't feel like rapping. I don't feel like recording. I just, I don't know what this bubble is that I'm in. And he was like, man, well, whatever you're dealing with, however you're feeling, we can we can actually talk about that, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it ended up being about might not be okay. And it's the idea of me being human and being scared, not only for the people that I see on television or what happens to these victims due to police brutality, but how I feel when I'm driving down the street, mm -hmm. which is like, man, I don't know. It, it might not work out for me yeah. right now. And uh, it came from that. And then shout out to the team that I have that understood the artistic aspect and then allowing me to also do the same thing when it came to the performance, which was wearing a police outfit. It was great that I that I, I actually experienced your performance before I seen uh before I saw the the movie The Birth of a Nation yeah. because you know, there's this there's this energy that um that uh that's in the air. And and, and it's funny that you say fear. Because my pastor often says that fear is you know, and fear is the opposite of faith, yeah. but fear fear is the only thing that holds us back from greatness. Mm. When you got on that stage and you knew the reaction and you knew the impact of what you were about to say on that BT mm. Hip Hop Awards stage, was there trepidation? You know what I'm saying? When you, you, like, like I, I just want to know, just being oh, in your shoes, man, you know, like, you let know? me tell you, man. Yeah, definitely, man. It was, it was a lot of prayer before it happened. A mm -hmm. lot of calling my my friends and people that I've worked with between you know calling Steve O. My uh, Steve OGFC, Maya mm -hmm. Bailey, Wally Sparks, uh, Dutch, my manager, Shaka Zulu, Jeff. Shout to Shaka um, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, calling these people and like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get this, that, just get my mind wrapped around a, about what's going to happen and what I'm going to do and how I need to present this. And I want to make it right because mm -hmm. 
I'm I'm representing myself in a way for people that actually have been through it and or are victims of it. And I don't want to I don't want to mess this up. Yeah. You know, and it was a lot of pressure and, and a lot of fear because uh, me, obviously, you want to be you want to be perfect or you want to get it all the way right. But it's like, how do I convey that pain? And, to, and Lord willing, it helps them. Yeah. But in the same time, I don't I have no idea what it's like to deal with that. Yeah. In the same breath. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I go through the same thing. And particularly, you know, where some of us who are perceived as being more affluent, mm -hmm. but we still go through the same shit. Yeah. You know, I recently bought a, um, uh, I bought a supplemental car to, to the house, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm about to get rid of my lease. I ain't want to be without no goddamn car. Yeah, you know? yeah, so you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I, I bought a, I bought like a 93 uh, uh, Accord. And um, the thing was. The, the tail light was out, mm -hmm. and I said to myself, "Shit, uh, yeah, you don't the most be... important thing I got to get done on this on this ragged Just ass get car. That fixed. This is tail light, and that's the type of fear that we, yeah, and energy that we that, that we living under yeah, now. Because you you want to get it fixed now because you scared that tail light could be the difference between you life getting home or losing your life. Yeah, back in the day, man, it, me, I'm just I don't want to go to jail. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I. And I say this a lot. People don't pull over because they're not scared. They pull over because they're scared. Yeah. The people that drive and keep moving and then hit the lane and then speed through traffic, they're not scared. Yeah. If I pull over, I'm trying to get home. Yeah. Whatever you put your lights on for, I'm going to talk to you about it. We're going to figure it out. If I got to spend two days in the tank because my license is suspended or my insurance is out, I gotta cool, I'll do though. that. But don't, don't, get... don't kill me for yeah. it, though. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine how it was before all these camera phones? Man, but no, it it was exactly how it is now. But we mm. just get to see it live. We mm. get to see it because of the camera phones. And this has been happening. Yeah. It's been in the news or it's been a part of newspapers or part of communities, but now social networking is made it where if something happens, everybody knows about it. You and know? everybody can see it. You know what's crazy? I remember Richard Pryor records and he was like he, he was like, you know when white folks look at the he's just he's just resisting arrest, you know? But but then you bring it to twenty sixteen and you on that stage Nah, we not just resisting arrest. It's 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 a, it's, a, it's a condition. Yeah. When you don't know what to do when somebody pulls you over, that's even more scary. When you don't, you put your hand on the wheel, but that might not be enough. You put your hands in the air, that might not be enough. You grab your credentials and everything is legit, and that might not be enough. You get out of the car and you put your hand on the hood, that might not be enough. What do you do? Mm, mm. It's a it's a, it's a lot of those things that go. People don't know what to do now. Yeah. So well, that's I, well, that's I applaud scary. you. I applaud you for standing up and in, 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 in actually articulating. You know our fears. I'm gonna play some music. We're gonna play some music, and I want to come back and find out what's going on with you, cause that's some revolutionary things happening with you. Eight seven seven six zero four four seven four six is the number. Big Crit is here. We're gonna introduce your artist, no, your no, brother. Now it's, no, it's not my artist. This is my brother. This your is OG, brother? my big bro, Smoke Dizzle, man. Ben, he, yeah, he he wanted to be the er, help us usher me. Oh, we gonna bring in back Smoke Dizzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight seven seven. Not my artist. No, look no, at that. You know, six, no eight Lord. seven seven six zero four four seven four six. <laughs> you know, it's the Sergeant OQ hosting for Torre on Hip Hop Nation. We your event. Y'all stay in tune. Hip Hop Nation, straight hip hop hits. Period. Live in studio event. Big Crit yeah, is here. Smoke Dizzle is here. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. You know, and he had his hat all low, Big Crit. <laughs> you know? Yo, you, you know, um, before we left, and, 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 and Dizzle, you know, just, just chime in, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, as you will. But um, we were talking about, um, you know, just, just, just the conditions that, that we're living in and, and whatnot. Big time presidential, presidential election coming up. Mm. <laughs> you know we got we got these choices. How we feel? Come on, you got everybody shaking their head up in here <laughs> to talk. You, you, anybody just jump in? Just jump in. You you know know my shit is hey man, let me tell you something, it. man. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, man, it's, it's a lot of reality TV aspects to a lot of this. Where it's a lot of topics that most people want to really hear, and uh, it's very important as far as far as you going overseas and talking to a lot of these politicians, mm -hmm. ambassadors, or whatever. And I, I see a lot of them uh, like really comparing it to hip hop. But hip hop is like is an art form, right? And it's mm -hmm. an art form, and you paint whatever you want on your canvas. I don't think politics is an art form, so you can't really paint what you want on your canvas. You're speaking for a lot of people when you go overseas and when you do these things and you talk to people. So no, it's not the same thing. So I don't think that really is the same because hip hop also allows people to talk about their environment, their slang terminology, where they come from, be self-centered because it's an art form. When you're a painter and you paint whatever you see, that's how you feel. 
But I don't think politics is the same thing, and it shouldn't be compared at all to any musical genre at all because that is a art. Is this is totally different, right? Um, also, with saying that, I'm it, fuck Donald Trump. Okay. First off, I, I, well, well, I guess he missed that. your endorsement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we ain't tripping on that. You know what I'm saying? And but are you happy with the choices? Seriously. I, I mean, but me, it's like uh, we, we we just we made history, and so why not keep making history? And mm. so, and then I'll say that you know, at, at the end of the day. I mean, wanting change and seeing change, or it goes back to where you don't know what also may happen, or you're dealing with somebody that doesn't like you at all. Mm. Um, because obviously, Hillary has also been a part of the Obama administration as well. Mm -hmm. And so to say, all right, well, nah, I, I, I want Obama back, but then I won't vote for her, it's like you, you, it's, it's the same thing, or in the same mind frame of trying to help you or present something to you that you actually recognize or actually is beneficial to you as being a minority or somebody mm -hmm. that a lot of these other presidents may not even pay attention to. So, so it's, it's, it's easy for me to say, and being from the South and being confident when I say, yeah, I vote for Hillary before I vote for Trump. And then to not vote, you're almost giving a vote for Trump anyway. Mm. So it is what it is. So you know does, a, does a, when you, you, you know, do, do you feel, because a lot of people are disenchanted, they might, they might stay home and not vote. How do you feel about the, the you know, because... I think that we elected as as hip hoppers, we got uh, uh, we we elected the first African American president. How you feel about the whole process? Um, I mean, <clears throat> I don't really want to speak on my political views because I don't want to scare off any fans that I got that <laughs> might man. be tuned in because <laughs> my shit is a bit more awkward than others. Because I I mean, for me, <clears throat> I just look at the whole debate and all that shit like for ratings. Like that shit is not even really doing mm. nothing for my household, to be honest. And then when it comes to like our choices that we got to choose from, it's just I guess whatever the lesser evil is. But I mean, to crit, to crit's point, you mm -hmm. know, Hillary was working with Obama, so I mean, I, I guess it makes sense for that. But I mean, for me, it's it's all written anyway. Mm -hmm. They know who they're gonna pick. They know who the president is already. You so, know, it's just so. Let's talk about the, the let's talk about like our house. So. Let's talk about this house. Let's, let's look at hip hop as a house, and because I look at other communities and they have their concerns, they have their their mm -hmm. agendas. Why don't we have a an agenda? Or, or, or why don't we have you know what the hip hop contingency from 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 across the country they have these concerns like everybody else has have mm -hmm. concerns I don't why don't we have an agenda hip hop well, hip hop I mean hip hop, this, I mean, hip -hop hip I'm hip -hop. talking about to be on a platform with with, with Hillary and say listen hey this, this is I mean but no the agenda is we I mean because you think about you think about the culture and you think about the youth is we we are votes we are an agenda in itself i mean it was, it was power behind when your favorite rapper says something or they inspire people to do That's something true. so they they the the idea they are looking to us to inspire people to do and have votes and whatever so the agenda is there with us just being independent and being us and with any genre of music where it's once you become a genre once you become as powerful as you are in your genre your agenda is like your your necessity to what they want to do mm. you know more than ever it's like all right well i don't have to go talk to these these this genre i can go talk to this genre i don't have to talk to, I talk to this genre I don't, I don't have to go on this radio station i'll go to that radio station i get it because it, the power is in the people and music is for the people and has always been that's why a kid from any random place a kid from meridian mississippi can grow up and do music and then go from there to Birmingham, Alabama, then to Atlanta, and then go to New York and follow his dreams and then inspire everybody from that Mason Dixon line on down. I get it. So it's like, that's what we do as a culture. And I'm, the politics just, is not necessarily what I think the genre of music has always been. I'm just more black and white. You know, like, 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 like some communities say, you know what, we want you know, unisex bathrooms, or some 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 communities say, you know what, we want borders open, or we want borders closed, or whatever. I, I just want hip hop to be like, you know what, we as a contingency, we, we we want these concerns, we want that concern. We just never have black and white. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, but I mean, that's there, but it's also a basics of yo. I want my my community safe. Yeah, I don't want to go down the street and get that shot. That could be one of our goddamn I, points. I really would. I really would like for my my house not to cost so much. I would like mm -hmm. for my tax to be lower. I would I would like to go to work. And and I, I get paid more than minimum wage. Mm -hmm. It's these small things that, are to to hip hop or to the people that actually listen to it, as very important because it all involves more of, hey, I don't want to keep paying this much for gas and I'm running out by the time I have to go to work at this time 
and I need this and I need that. I need to put food on my on my table. Mm -hmm. That still is a very important topic mm -hmm. in society. And I think sometimes we forget that. I hear you, I hear you. So, you know, because I know we got you for just a limited amount yeah, of time. Yeah, no, we chilling, man. We chilling. We chilling. Here, here, can we play a record and come back? I don't know what I mean. I don't, you know. You know what? Well, God damn it. If we can't play no record and come I back. I don't know what record. Do you have a... Uh, do we got to... We have free agent. We got so, look. We're going to play some music and come back and let you introduce yeah, free agent and then talk about your about what's happening with you. 877-604-4746. You know we don't get him. We don't get him here too often, goddammit. So get your questions in Twitter <laughs> at Hip Hop Nation. Follow us and all that good stuff. DJ Mad, let's get it. It's a live in studio event, y'all. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, that's, that's a that's a lot to digest right there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, man. That's a lot of emotion right there. A lot of emotion. <laughs> How we gonna die said that? Well, where do we start? You know, uh, um, I know how I know how we can start, man. Shout, yeah, out, you, to, you, shout out to Willpower, man, for making that 808 bounce okay. around. Okay, like, you, you, that you felt that knock? You know what I'm saying? You still shout got out that to knock, Willpower, boy. man. Shout out to Michael, man, Wolf. You know what I'm saying? Engineered mm -hmm. by Wolf, that you know mixed that. So yeah, we gonna start like that, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just happy yeah. you keep that knock, baby. You know, you know, you know me. I'm from yeah, I'm from the home of that gun rattle. That trunk got the rattle, man. I'm from that country. I'm from Cutlass Country. Whoa, that's, all right, that's a shirt. I'm a, uh, see, no, 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 don't, we, no, don't worry. Shirt. I'm going to talk to you about Kyrie and all that. <laughs> Colors country. I got you. Don't worry. So check this out. <laughs> so check this out. You know, we, we, got the, we got the big, you know, everybody, everybody used to, I'm going to mm -hmm. use the word used to, yes. just, and you know this, there's a, you know, everybody used to just want to get signed. Mm -hmm. Let me get signed. God damn it, I need to get signed. And then they get signed by such a, 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 a big label, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, as your former label, you know, uh, it, it one one would be like you know ecstatic or whatever the case may be. What to be assertive? What was what were your um? What prompted your decision to say you know what? You know even though this is a blessing for others, mm -hmm. I need something different. I mean, you want to speak on this first? Speak on it first. You, you uh, nah, on you go ahead because you no, just, no, go you, you got you got I'm, a lot to talk about yeah, on that. Yeah, I mean, no, nah, it's it's not even that, man. It's it's really. I mean, when you're young, you want to get on the radio. Mm -hmm. You get on the radio, then it's like, man, I want to get a deal. Mm -hmm. And you get a deal, but then it's like, what's next? You know, and if if you're not paying attention or you're not understanding or you don't have a, this kind of team that I had around me at the time and people to show me the business, then you don't learn. But it's a lot of learning within that because you, you're in the red once you sign a deal at some point. You got to pay that back. It's, it's a really good loan. It's a great loan. But a lot of the money in the advance they give you is all about you taking care of yourself because you don't have a nine to five. You don't have a regular job. So that time is spent in the studio. That money is also spent for you to pay your bills, help out whoever you're going to help out because most people are going to help out their family or other people that can't take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And then that money still has to be paid back on top of the money to, to actually pay to make your album. Mm -hmm. You know, and having that understanding. It got to be recouped. That's yeah, it's, yeah the, the, that word, recouped. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And um, having that understanding in me, the blessing was we didn't take so much up front, and a lot of things didn't happen so far up front that when it came time, and it took a, a few years as far as me and maybe them not understanding, I'm feeling like when the, the transition happened probably a year and a half ago from album sales to streaming, that I wasn't as valuable, and then they kind of let me go. Mm. So the thing for me was like, okay, that's cool, but there's still people out there that don't really want to put their debit card or whatever online, and they still go to those stores and they buy those albums. So that's value there. And then streaming is also a part of that because me, I, I've always and and have dropped a lot of free music. Yeah. So I've also built up that support Classic as mixtapes. well. Classic mixtapes. You know, and so it, it was like it, it was it was one of those things where I always wanted to be with a label is. Yeah, extremely happy about it, but at the same time, being independent and for me, more tied to the sun die was a blessing because all all the people that I work with, even starting when it came more tied, was it was Dutch and Steve O. You know, and us working that idea of what that is, and then mm -hmm. Big Sun being an artist, and to be so free now, yeah. it is man, you can't beat that. And here's the man? thing, you know, you I, I guess you have to work by their rules as it pertains to distributing music and putting out music mm -hmm. whereas you, you know I, I, the, the, the thing you could, you could you could address this smoke you know um, you know artists like yourself mm -hmm. you know the, the both of you wanting to put out stuff you know that you know that you feel like you want to put out as opposed to what a system and a structure want, want you to put out speak to it I mean that's true I mean I don't know the, the whole concept of being signed and like having a deal it's kind of like kind of stagnates you a little bit as, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not always a bad thing because you know some people are, they don't have it 
to to motor this shit mm-hmm. to begin with. So I mean, having a record deal and getting that kind of money and whatever you, whatever label that you under is like, all right, bet. I'm. This is the family. This is where I'm at. But it's not really a family at the end of the day because mm-hmm. they could drop you. You know what I mean? That's they could just shelf right you. They could yeah. sit you up. You can stay can at your mama's house, but yeah. they, they, they drop. They drop you. They drop they gonna you. Dra- it's over, and they yeah. just don't know. You don't answer no calls, no nothing. So I mean. I don't know though. It's it's tricky. It's yep. it's basically just do whatever you feel like is best for you to keep building to that. Keep buzz. building your your. your if brand. you think about it, like sports, it's like man, when you go to a team, it's a lot of star players, right? What's the odds of you actually playing? Mm-hmm. The odds of you actually starting? You know right. what I'm saying? Like when you got your own team, or when you go to a team that's starting to build and then getting it right, your your you, the position you want, you may actually get some playing time. You know what I'm saying? You may get in there to be able to shine. And so that also plays a part too, and then it also helps you with your confidence of your worth. Sometimes you you people don't understand that worth, and you get into a position where you don't want to step on toes, or you or they tell you what your worth is because that's the only cap. That well, that's the cap. Like it's all I can give you, so that's what mm. your worth is. And sometimes waiting a little longer, or building that brand up, or using social networking, because now you don't have to use marketing budgets for real, for real, to market yourself in, because now you have social networking. Honestly, outside of outside of your music and whatnot, I'm telling you right now, man, you just, you should just be dropping these, you know, both, the, both of you guys should just be dropping these jewels, because I just, you know, I guess we all see a lot of you new, young, impressionable acts that just want, just want the fame, but yeah. they don't, they don't know the back end but of this But believe thing. it or not, a lot of, and I, I, I will say this, I give a credit, a lot of the youth, you discovered because they understood how to work social networks. Yeah. <laughs> so they still had the marketing part mm-hmm. down. It's just when you get to that table is excitement and then what they tell you you worth and then you might run for it. Mm-hmm. But they, the marketing side, they figured that out early. How, how do you how to make yourself look like a star and bare minimum? How to get the attention of people, bare minimum, the music nothing at all quality is not what you people expect but it's still so, okay I can rock to this bare minimum so, so people figure that out yeah so it, 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 you know just, just just to wrap things up I know you gotta get out of here I know you're recording and stuff yeah we're so, working so let me ask you you know what's the next project we can expect from you when can we expect it etc cetera, etc cetera. okay well I'm working on an album right now Third Core Ribs and all day the Big Sun just dropped a, a record called was a Sleep EP go check that out right now so I know Smoke Dizzle is working you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying come on Dizzle get in there yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Got this um, album fully produced by Pete Rock mm. coming out in December. Mm. Called okay. Don't Smoke I'm Rock. I'm featured on it. Put it on it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so, I get so, a feature so this, on so it. This is how we're going to wrap this thing up. Okay. Check this out. You see that drum set over there? I don't know what that means. No, no, listen. No, no. We're not. No, no. We're not. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I saw you with Jermaine Dupree. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, listen. Uh, no, listen. Uh, listen. That can mean when, freestyling. No, 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 no. It, stays, it stays in here. No, okay. but, I, but I, I wanted to, t- to show you that that drum set can be accompanied by. Other instruments, okay. And, and and here's our promise to you on Hip Hop Nation. All right, let's go. This, this is our promise to I'm, you. I'm listening. Yeah, this, this stands for you too, Smoke. Whenever you're ready, mm. you know we're gonna have about a, a hundred of your fans out in that lobby and inside of here. We listening. And 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 because you're so articulate and you can handle the the the, the, uh, the situation okay. yourself, you can perform, talk about your music, okay. without all the questioning. And, and do your thing. That's our promise to man. you, and it's on air. Man, God damn it. Little boy. Oh, let's, oh, let's them white folk fire me. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> For talking this shit with you. Oh shit. <laughs> trust me, I ain't talk too crazy. I ain't got. Trust me, I was trying to. I was trying to help you keep your job. Be like, Don't worry. That nigga gone. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, for real, for real. For real, for real. I'm trying to help you keep your job. Don't worry. Thank you for what you do, man. And, Thank and, you. And uh, we appreciate you. Appreciate for coming up here and and and, uh, and and just blessing us with your presence. No man. doubt. No doubt, man. Let's get back to some music. Project Pat. Yeah, I know yeah. you got to go for Project yeah. Pass. No, no, no. Reg- 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 Re